Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm going to open an envelope from Belgium sent to me by Petra. It's full of homelands and I'm also going to open up, and I'm really looking forward to that, this brick, which I don't know what's in here, but my buddy Ezra sent me this um, as, a, as a thank you, which of course you shouldn't have, but as a thank you for me kind of forwarding a card to you here from uh, from Europe. But this this is this is very, very happy. This is heavy, this is insane. So I'm really looking forward to open this up. But first I'm gonna do something that's bring that will bring me so much joy because I need eight more cards to finish my Homelands collection. It's actually here. Uh, this is my Homelands collection. I only need eight more cards to finish it and Petra was kind enough to actually send me the eight cards, they're in here. And the funny thing is, they're not even the most expensive cards in the set. I thought I, uh, I would uh, show them here. These are the cards with the most value. I believe Didgeridoo is the most valuable. Of course, very playable if you're playing Minotaur Tribal. Talking about Tribal, that's probably also the reason why Willow Priestess has some value. Two green and two to cast for this fairy. And um, yeah, it's a card I don't see often, you know, but I play old school and you just don't see Homelands often. But I can imagine like maybe in, in modern decks or EDH decks, it could be good if you have that fairy theme going. And talking about tribal, this card is your anti-tribal card. I believe this is the other card in Homelands that, uh, that holds some nice value. But I really remember this set mostly uh, because of this dude, Baron Sangir. Everybody wanted to pull a Baron Sangir from those booster packs. And remember, those packs, they only had eight tradable cards. I actually have a closed booster pack here sent to me by uh, my buddy Keith. And uh, I actually made a video of that mail day as well. So maybe you've seen it. I'm, and I'm opening up uh, some Homelands booster packs as well and actually put them here in my collection. But I kept this one closed to kind of add to my collection. I don't own a lot of sealed magic product, but I do like it when you um, have the set complete and if you also have a booster. Right, that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, like I don't have an antiquities booster, but I do have the set, <laughs> but okay. Same thing goes for this. Uh, uh, you can see it here, this uh, a revised, I've got a revised set, but I don't have any revised boosters, of course. But anyway, I'm really happy to, uh, to have a Homelands booster. And, uh, and for now, I'm gonna, gonna open this up and hopefully this has the, uh, the last eight cards that I need to complete the set. So of course, as always, Petra, thank you so much. You're just absolutely too kind. And uh, cause I posted this somewhere online and, and you responded like, okay, what cards do you need? Yeah, I've got those cards for you and I'll, I'll send them over. And that's kind of the way how I've collected most of this Homelands collection because there's not a lot of value in it. I had most of the cards already. My brother had some cards as well. My LGS had some cards. I recently picked up 16 cards from my, uh, from my game store. And um, and yeah, a lot of people just gave me cards or I was able to trade them for other like pretty cheap stuff. Um, let's see, ooh, we got some sellotape here. That is always risky. I believe there is one very iconic card from the set in here, which is Autumn Willow. Oh, we got a, we got a letter first. Hi Thomas, sent you eight of the nine, eight of the nine to complete your collection. So I guess I still need one more. I enjoy browsing through my NTG collections every now and then. I hope you do too. Have fun with the cards and your collection. By the way, no need to send me a card. I would love to send you some cards, Peter. We actually talked about this. I'm gonna try, because you've sent me so much stuff and I only, I think I only sent you something back once. So I wanna, I wanna send you some more stuff, but Petra has an amazing collection of magic cards and she's very, picky about the cards that she's still looking for, which which makes sense, I can I can understand. Anyway, we have some of the cards here that I still need. Let's go. Wow, that is, there's some thunder out here. I don't know if you can hear that, but that was some loud thunder. So we've got the Beast Walker, uh, two white and one. Look at that funky art. Actually, I already have the Beast Walker, um, but it's great to have another one. And it's green, it gives you banding, it's a 2-2. These, I mean, Homelands, what a, yeah, special set. Guy, okay, this is a card I don't have yet. Fairy Noble. So Fairy Noble goes very well with the Willow, uh, Willow uh, Priestess that I that I showed earlier. 
So fairy noble, a summon noble, I believe it's also a fairy now, flying, all fairies you control get plus O plus one, and you can tap it, and all fairies you control get plus one plus O. So it's kind of like a fairy lord, but again, you know, it's homeland, so they couldn't just say all fairies get plus one plus one, no, they had to make this weird tap situation going, but this is actually a card that I, I believe has some value too in the, in the homelands. Then we've got headstone, yeah, definitely a card I didn't have yet, one black and one to cast for an instant, Remove from the game, target card in any graveyard. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Very cool. Oh yeah, this this is such a unique card. Also, uh, I believe it's like 90 cents or something, which is quite valuable in Homelands. Uh, two white and one to cast for leeches, a sorcery. Target player loses all poison counters. Leeches deals one damage to the player for each poison counter removed this way. Very cool art. Like he's putting the leeches on the body to kind of suck out the poison, very flavorful. Basically it's what they did in the dark ages. If you were sick, right, you would get the leeches out and they would, they would cover your body with leeches and you would probably die soon after. But for some reason they thought the leeches could kind of take out the sickness. Very, very unique card in Magic the Gathering. You can see him coming here with another platter of leeches, I guess. That is insane. Um, oh yeah, and another one, uh, you have that whole Minotaur tribal theme going on in uh, in Homelands. And this is Anaba Spirit Crafter, two red and two to cast. All Minotaurs get plus one, plus oh, and it's a one, three creature. I like the fact that it's a one, three, like not a two, two or something. It's quite beefy. It, it can stay alive. You can still bolt it though, but you can kind of see a spirit being crafted here. Very interesting art by Anson Maddox. Ah, here we go, the Autumn Willow, yeah. This is such an iconic card in the set. Two green and four for a four four. That's right, six mana for a four four. But look at the ability. It's a legend and it reads, cannot be the target of spells or effects. This was unheard of at the time, especially the green ability. Pay a green, target player may target Autumn Willow with spells or effects until end of turn. This made this card so good because you can pay one green and say, okay, I can now play cards on it. And it was untouchable for everybody else. No swords, no bolt, nothing could touch it. So this was a safe space for all your enchant creatures, right? And I think this is such a good design start for Watsi, what of course would eventually become Hexproof. Um, you know, this is a great start because it enables you as a player to start playing with enchant creatures again. And I've recently uh, played a game with Instal Energy and my Timmies. And every time I was confronted again with the fact that you're setting yourself up for two for one, thanks to these kind of mechanics, you can safely start playing your enchant creatures again. I, I think it's fantastic. And this card was definitely a chase card back in the Homelands day. And there we see I Asian, Asian, Asian bureaucrats, bu bureaucrats. I, I can't pronounce this stuff, but it's one white and one for a one one tap, tap target creature with power no greater than two. Now, um, in Homelands, You've got the common cards, I believe, that are uh, printed in two different art types. So I had one art type of the uh, Asian, Asian bureaucrats. Here I go again. It's not Asian, it's Asian. Anyway, uh, I had one art type and this is the other art that I was still missing. So thank you, Petra, for that because I couldn't find it at my LGS. Ah, Baki's Curse. That kind of, that's, that's, look at the art, you know. It's got something. I also, I, I like the, the purple. So two blue and two, the purple and blue, I think it's really cool. It's a sorcery. Baki's Curse deals two damage to each creature for each creature enchantment on that creature. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let me read it again, but <laughs> that properly so that you can understand. Baki's Curse deals two damage to each creature for each creature enchantment on that creature. So I guess you could play this as a sideboard card if your opponent is crazy about enchant creatures. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why else you would play this. Oh, this card is so funny. Four mana, sorcery speed, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, I am super happy, Petra, and I'm actually gonna, gonna put the cards in.
So I am missing three cards, it seems. Okay, fair enough, three cards. You know what, I'm gonna find out what cards they are and you know, I'm, I'm gonna show you here what three cards they are and then I'm gonna try to, uh, to collect them, obviously, but I'm very close to finishing my Homelands collection. Petra, thank you so much once again for sending these cards. You are too kind and too generous. Um, and you know what? I'm going to tidy this up for a moment and then I'll be right back and I'm going to open this Big Break by Ezra. Okay, we are back and uh, I'm going to open the break. Tidied up the Homelands collection. Now it's time to move on to the break. I mean, this is insane. All the way from the States. I mean, can I, how far can I get without scissors? I don't think I can get very far, but I'm going to try. Okay, this, this, this helps a little bit. I don't want to show his address, obviously. Um, Got to be a little bit careful. Oh, look at this. I think I can kind of open this. Let me just check it out. I mean, I really don't want to show any private information. Mm, yeah, this is this is completely taped shut. So I'm gonna get some scissors, and we're gonna wapa, open this up. This up, boom, shakalaka. And then we got this side one. Ooh, this is tough. But I do understand, Ezra. You want it, you want the cards to be safe. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's something. We need these. Boom, now it's open. Now we're gonna open it up. Bam. Come on, work with me. Yes, oh wow. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Insane, man. Why did you send my way? You crazy, you crazy man. Look at all these cards. We're gonna go through them. One at a time. I got I guess I got some special stuff here. That I'm going to to put here because it seems to be sleeved. We've got some stuff here that I'm gonna put on the left. And I think Ezra did not include a letter. Not that you have to, um, but I just want to say, man, this is overwhelming that you've sent me all this stuff. This is a little bit, yeah, you're super cool. Absolutely super cool. Um, yeah, and I guess let's just start with the start. We'll start with this chunk here. Uh, these are revised cards, it seems. Now I do play unsleeve revise. Maybe you've seen it on the channel. So it looks like there are some cards I can use for unsleeve revised. We've got a brass man, celestial prism, dragon engine, gender saddlebacks. Goes together quite well with Timmy, and with Colossus of Sardia. By the way, we've got a drain life. We've got a frozen shade. I like playing frozen shade with dark ritual, hell from beyond, nettling imp. A classic combo with. Uh, um, with Royal Assassin, we've got the Plague Rats, we've got more Plague, Plague, you, Plague Rats never come alone. You just know there's gonna be a second Plague Rats. We've got a Raised Dead, beautiful Air Elementals. We've got Feedbacks, Flights, Creature Bonds. We've got Jumps, Life Taps. So the best way, by the way, to determine whether or not it's revised or unlimited is simply looking at, at the colors so the colors of Unlimited are more lively. Uh, the best way to see the difference between Revised and Fourth Edition, again, the coloring, but also the line here underneath here, it only says the, the artist, whereas on Fourth Edition, you've got like an extra line about um, Magic the Gathering and stuff. So here we've got some Merfolk of the Pearl Tridents. I love this card, Phantasmal Forces. Such a cool card. It's very hard to play with though, because in blue, you always want to keep mana open. And this kind of needs one island every upkeep, which is kind of hassle, but I, it's still good. I mean, if you play a 4-1 flyer, your opponent has to come up with an answer. 
So here we got some Phantasmal Terrains. Yeah, Phantasmal Monster. Beautiful card. Power League, very unique. And Enchant Enchantment. You don't see that anymore. Enchant Enchantment. I love it. So that's our first chunk of cards. All revised goodies. We're going to go through here. We've got Power Leak. Of course, we got the Tims. I got to put that separate, man. We got Psychic Venoms. I like Psychic Venom on a City of Brass with an IC. I mean, then you're just dealing three damage a turn. That's that's very brutal. We've got Sea Serpents. I wish it had Island Walk. That would, would have been made it a little bit more playable. We got Spell Blasts. We got Unsummon, which is a very good card. Wall of Airs. Man, this is crazy. So much stuff. We've got a crawl worm. Oh, and all of a sudden a stasis. Wait a minute. This is a rare and an iconic one. So one blue and one for an enchantment. Players do not get an untapped face. Pay one blue during your upkeep or stasis is destroyed. Cards still do not untap until the next untapped face. This card is very, very good. You can make brutal prison decks with the with the stasis card. So we've got Crawl Worm. I love Crawl Worm as a kid. We got Fog. Another rare, Gaius Leech. This card, oh man. I used to think it was so good. But when you play with it, you realize it is not the best. But it's so cool to play with. Three green and three to cast. It's got an asterisk, asterisk for power and toughness. You can tap it and turn any one land into a basic forest. Mark changed lands with counters. Are removing the counters when Gaius Leech leaves play. Gaius Leech has power and toughness equal to the number of forests controller has in play when it's attacking. So only when it's attacking. They're equal to the number of forests defending player has in play. So um, I'm not sure if I read it out properly, but basically what it does is if you've got eight forests and you cast this one, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. But when you attack your opponent, its power and toughness gets turned into the amount of forests your opponent has. So if your opponent has zero forests, you can basically kill your own leech by, by attacking your opponent. But obviously the idea here is that you first turn a lot of his lands into forests. Now, the big problem I have with this card, I actually don't have a problem with this card. I think it's beautiful. But the fact that when you kill the leech, all the, the lands that you've turned into forests kind of turn back to their what they originally were, I wish they wouldn't have included that because I think the card is not overpowered if they wouldn't have given it that drawback. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's it's still cool. It's also really nice uh, to play if you play like a forest walk theme. I know there's this card in, in the dark that gives all uh, creatures forest walk or was it green creatures? Anyway, so it's kind, quite a, kind of nice to play those two cards next to each other. Um, it's very costly though, but it's fun. It's all in good fun. It's a rare as well, by the way. So I'm going to put it with stasis. We've got Lanora Elves, very good card. Lure, Wall of Woods, the Atok. The, nobody used to play with the Atok back in the day. It's just crazy how good the Atok actually is. We've got Dragon Well, Dwarven Warriors, Earth Elemental, Earth Bind, Stunning Art, Quentin Hoover, what an artist. Fire Elemental, Grey Ogre, more Grey Ogres. We've got a Hill Giant. This is going to go to my, my brother. He organized a tournament at Hilversum, the Hill Giant Cup. So I'm going to give you the Hill Giant. We've got a Wall of Fire. I actually play with Wall of Fire. It's kind of nice to play Wall of Fire and Sword of the Ages because it turns Wall of Fire into some kind of weird fireball. It's uh, it's very cool. It's very nice. When it works, it's really cool. Uh, we got some white cards again. We got Banala Hero. We got Disenchant, the Pegasus, a Red Wart, uh, a Samite Healer. I've said this a few times. Just going to say it again. We got a little face here, Ghost Face. We got a White Wart. I think Dan Frazier said that um, he finds the art he made for the wards the worst. But to be honest, it's probably just me and nostalgia. But I kind of like the fact that it's so simple. I like it. It's just very subtle that there is some kind of ward going on in the art. I, I, I like it. I, call me crazy, but I like it. Okay, so these are revised cards. We got some other cards. I'm going to turn it around. Ah, we got Fallen Empires. Tidal Influences. Ah, these cards are crazy. Fuldalian Mage. Beautiful art. This is quite nice if you can combine it in like a Winter Orb strategy deck. Because then it's quite annoying for your opponent to keep one open. We got Vidalian Soldiers. This is actually a good card. Thelonite Druid. Um, one green and two for a 1-1 one, one Summon Cleric. Uh, one green and one tap. Sacrifice a creature to turn all your forest into two, three creatures. 
um, until end of turn, right? Uh, the forests still count as lands, but may not be tapped uh, for mana if they were brought into play this turn. So they do have then summoning sickness. But I mean, it's 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 super cool, right? Uh, because what you can do if you combine this with the Thalids that are also part of Fallen Empires, you can sacrifice a Sprawling token and just have a forced army. Again, it also works really well with this, right? The, just the flavor of just building a huge forest. I guess it, this is kind of a non-bow in a way, right? Because, oh, it's all your forest into play, not your opponents. Okay, I guess then these two, these two guys could, could work along. It would be a really cool theme deck. Uh, we got some Brass Claw Orcs, you know, nicknamed the Wolverine, especially this dude, the Wolverine. Then we've got some more Brass Claw Orcs, Dwarven Lieutenant, which actually is one of the better dwarves around. If you play Dwarven Tribal, you are going to play this bad boy. Two red for one, two, one red and one. Target Dwarf gets plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. Dwarven Lieutenant, we've got an Orcish Captain. Orcish Captain Pendlehaven, that's all I'm going to say. Look it up, think about it, it works, it's pretty cool. Then we've got Orcish Spy, Orcish Spy Millstone, again, pretty cool combination. This is actually a dressed up goblin. If you read, you know, let's read the flavor text. Why not? So first off, what does it do? One red, one, one tap. Look at the top three cards of target player's library and return them in the same order. So you're like, okay, whatever. Uh, works pretty good with counter magic, but of course, really well with the millstone. And then the flavor text tells me it's actually a goblin. Orcish armies often employed the smaller, swifter, and less intelligent goblins as spies. Very smart, right? Now remember, maybe goblins are less intelligent, but they are way more courageous than orcs. Orcs is always hiding. If you read the lore about the orcs, always, always trying to dodge a fight. So we've got orcish veteran. Orc is, I like orc. Orc and arena, that is, oh, I love playing that. I mean, unfortunately, there are not a lot of formats where you can play with those uh, Harvest Bazaar cards, I think they're called, right? But whenever I can combine Orc and Arena, I do so. It is a lot of fun. Also, um, of course, Orc and cards like Icy Manipulator work together quite well. Very nice. I guess you don't say Orc, you say Orch, don't you? Right? Or Org. Anyway, 6-6 six, six Trampler. An Orc may not attack if opponent controls an untapped creature of power greater than 2. Orc cannot be assigned to block any creature of power greater than 2. So, um, I love the flavor text. A little sentence. It's bigger. It's, it's bigger than it thinks. And then we've got Comet Medics. So we get some more really nice art by Anson Medics on this one. The Pharaoh's Zealots, crazy stuff. The Who Farted Infantry, Who Farted. And then we've got, oh, I love this. I love the art by Drew Tucker. I know it's, it's mixed. Some people say it's the worst art in Magic. I completely disagree. I love the art of Drew Tucker. I read in, um, in one of the old duelists, that one of the things he loved about making art for Watsi is that he got the freedom to experiment with new styles. And that's actually what he was doing all the time. And that's one of the things that I love about old school magic. The artists were giving the freedom to express themselves. And in today's magic, it's like, oh yeah, let's, let's uh, do something online, whatever. You know, they, they just don't get that freedom anymore. It's ah frustrating. Anyway, oh, we got so many more. You know what, let's do, let's do a card in here. Artifact Possession, a card from Antiquities, a sleeved one, that's why I took it out. Artifact Possession deals two damage to target artifacts controller each time target artifact is tapped or its activation cost is paid. Has no effect if cast on a continuous artifact. Pretty cool, pretty cool card. Antiquities, one of my favorite sets, probably my favorite uh, set of all, to be honest. Ooh, we got some more Fallen Empires. This is going to be a long mail day. We've got Delphi's Cone. We've got Armor Thrall. We've got Armor Thrall. We've got more Armor Thralls. Initiates of the Ebon Hand, which is could be quite cool if you combine it with um, with some kind of endless mana loop and a drain life, because you can make all your colorless mana into black mana. Order of the Ebon Hand, one of the most played Fallen Empire cards. So let's let's make some piles, shall we? So we've got... Uh, Fallen Empires here, we've got, wait, we can't see it now on the screen, doesn't matter that much, but we've got Revised here, and then everything that is slightly valuable, 
or I have to give it to somebody. We're going to put that over there. Okay, look at that deep spawn. Loved deep spawn. Homerets. I played with the Homeret tribal deck not too long ago. It was a lot of fun. Yes, it was bad, but it was a lot of fun. Mercine. Again, very cool art. Like the Merfolk is really coming at you. It's, it's quite aggressive. Mercine, Mercine, Tidal Flats. I mean, these cards, they're just, they're cool, but you cannot play with them, man. They are very cool. Tidal Influence, so funny. There's a lot of text. I'm not going to read it to you guys, but try to play with this card. It is fun. It is fun. I tried to combine it with Homerid Spawning Bath in one of my decks. Okay, and I guess, oh, I think I know. So these are all like from the older set. So it's Antiquities, one black and two, and it's a one, one. And you can tap the Gremlins to tap an artifact. And as long as the Gremlins remain tapped and in play, that artifact doesn't untap. And you may choose to keep Gremlins tapped. So you can kind of, you know, take an artifact hostage with Gremlins, which is a big deal because this is black and black usually doesn't have an answer to, um, to artifact, so it's a, it's a solution, you know? The Walking Dead, the OG Walking Dead. It's now a zombie, by the way, so you can play it in your zombie decks. A card from Legends, by the way, Walking Dead, so is this Active Volcano. Destroy target blue permanent or return target island to its owner's hand. Enchantments on target land are destroyed. Keepers of the Faith, just a vanilla. A 2-3 though, not a 2-2 two, two like the Pearl Unicorn, but you do have to invest a little bit more in white in order to cast it. Then we've got the Equinox. I really like the art of Equinox. So one white enchant land, tap land enchanted with Equinox to counter a spell that destroys one or more of your lands. This ability is played as an interrupt. Then we also have an Immolation. That is really sweet. Then we have a Wall of Wonder. I, I really like Wall of Wonder. I actually played Wall of Wonder in a wall deck. It was, the deck was so bad, but I just love this art. Let's just get it out and have a closer look. Isn't the Wall of Wonder, I believe it's an uncommon actually. Most walls were uncommon uh, back in the day. Two blue and two to cast. Let's get this Inquisition out of here. Try to zoom in better. Yeah, that's better. It's such a cool card. So the thing with this wall is if I pay two blue and two, it gains plus four, minus four, and I can actually attack with it. So it turns into a five one, <laughs> super. I mean, you can kill it very easily, but you can actually attack with it. I think that's super cool. So wall of wonder. Um, and then we've got the inquisition. It's from the dark. You can hardly see the dark symbol on those black cards. Look at target player's hand. Inquisition does one damage to target player for each white card in his or her hand. So funny. Again, it's a card nobody ever plays, but how cool is it to just play this, you know, when you when you got a you know in your sideboard against like a white weenie deck or something. Which probably probably then this card comes out too late because by the time you're at turn three or turn four, your opponent probably has already emptied their hand, but still. It's a cool card to play. Talking about cool cards to play, erosion, three blue, and then target land is destroyed unless his controller pays one or pays one life during his or her upkeep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on, dudes. If it was one blue, okay, but three blue to cast, it's insane. Marsh Goblins, two Marsh Goblins, again from the dark, Swamp Walk, 1-1. One, one. one of the first golden cards in the game of Magic. Then we've got Fisher, we've got another Fisher, we've got more fit. wow. Look at all those Fishers, five Fishers. I can start destroying a lot of lands. We've got a Goblin Digging Team, Three Goblin Digging Team, a Goblin Hero. Of course, Squire, a full playset of Squire. That is really a Timmy card. One white and one for a one, two creature. That's all it is. So you pay two mana for a one, two. <laughs> if at least it would be a two, one, but it's just a one, two. Also, I think if you're a Squire, it would have been cool if, you know, if you could tap it to give maybe plus O plus one or something, or if it would have had banding or you know, it's it's a squire. It should have some more function than just being a one-two. But it's just my, you know, humble opinion. Let me know in the comments below what ability you would like to give squire, you know. It's a squire. It should do something. It's handing a sword. So maybe it should give plus one, plus O, oh, you know, because it's handing a weapon. Makes sense. It, it also got a, it has a horse. It can take care of horses. Maybe give target horse first strike or something. I, 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 
I don't know. Let, let me know. I mean, if you think of lance, which is a spear, it gives first strike. So if you give a sword, it should give first strike. Right? Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Um, Ezra, my man. <laughs> I, 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 this is, this is insane. Oh, we still have a big stack. I almost forgot. We got a big stack still. Um, okay. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Oh, I see Homelands. I see Homelands. So this is probably some of the newer stuff, right? So we've got Clockwork Gnomes. We've got Clockwork Ebony Rhino. Dark Dark Maze, kind of interesting, right? This is four or five summon wool, but for zero, it can attack the, uh, this turn, but then it is removed at the end. So um, you can attack with it once. It's kind of cool. Giant Albatross, which is funny. Giant Oyster. I actually played with Giant Oyster in the tournament. It's, um, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's tough to play with. Jinx, a card I really like. So we've got Jinx, a card I really like. Uh, Labyrinth Minotaur, Memory Lapse, Reef Pirates. I love everything with Pirates. Sea Trolls, Carapace, Willow Fairy. Who knows, maybe the card that I'm missing is still in here somewhere. I'll, I'll have a look. And then, okay, we got a card from Chronicles, which is Urza's Tower, which is quite nice. I love having those Urza lands. Then we've got some Ice Age cards. I actually don't own a lot of Ice Age. Hey, Norit, I got a buddy of mine, Richard, this Norit is coming your way. Some more Ice Age. Let me know, Ezra, how much Ice Age do you still have? Ooh, this is actually Hydro Blast. These cards are valuable, you know. These are these are sought after, so we're gonna put it over there. I like Illusionary Forces. It's a good card. I think it's a good one. If you play Ice Age, you can play with Illusionary Forces. Get some more cards. Love the art. Not a good, not a very good card, but I do love the art. What else do we have? Oh, talking about good art, Slight of Mind. So cool. I believe it's also a rare. Very cool card. Very cool art. Let me show you from closer by. Look at it. Absolutely stunning. And art by, ooh, Nicola Leonard. Snowfall, very unique card. Of course, Zerdi the Enchanters, of course. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. We got some Essence Vortex. Some more Essence Vortex. More Essence Vortex. Okay, these are the golden cards, right? Kjeldoran, Frost Beast, Chuck Toad. Love that little. <laughs> and Chuck Toad. Love it. Uh, oh, yeah. The art in Ice Age. It's, sometimes it's so a comic, right? Comic style art. Tarpon. We've got the Touch. we got some Goblins. I'm just going to go through here, through these cards a little bit quicker. I do like the Farmer. It's, again, one of those cards... Target land becomes a swamp until its controller next and tap face. Really, really funny with the flavor. that You're going to put some pigs on this land and they'll turn your land into a swamp. It's just very, very funny. Very flavorful. A lot of these, by the way. Panics. Sabertooth Tigers. Shatters. We've got Word of Blasting, a way to destroy a wolf. We've got some Arctic Foxes. Armor of Faith. Like the art of this one. Very cool. Heal. I think heal is a useful little card because it's a cantrip. It replaces itself. So ideally you can save a creature with this and get an extra card. So that's pretty good value. Kildoran uh, Guard. And we've got a warning. Man, these, this is just a lot. So we've got Ice Age. We've got Fallen Empire. We've got uh, The Dark, uh, Antiquities, Legends. We've got Revised. It's just insane. And then... This is, this is crazy. Look at this. This is a booster pack. A French booster pack, it seems. That is insane. There are two of these. Wow. Is it French? Wait a minute. Is it French, though? Let's, op let's open it up. Maybe it's Spanish. I always... People on the channel keep telling me, man, you've got to see the difference between Spanish and French and Italian. You're absolutely right, but for some reason, it's hard for me to kind of see the difference. Wow, look at these specs. It's hard to to read on these. Anyway, what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna keep these absolute beauties uh, closed for now. I just, I do wanna show you from close by because I wanna do a little bit of research before I open them up and then I'm gonna make a special video of me opening up these booster packs because I wanna pay them the attention that they deserve. So I don't just wanna rip them open right now, although I'm super tempted to do it. And, and Ezra, man, I don't know how to thank you for these. You know, the cards are amazing that you're sending me these. I'm actually gonna give uh, a lot of them away as well to patrons, I think. Uh, but that you've also included these two boosters that is, it's, it's, it's amazing. So I'm gonna do some research with these and I'm gonna come back with another meal day video where I'm going to open these two beauties. So um, yeah, keep your eye on the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, maybe this is a nice reason for you to subscribe so you know exactly when I'm going to open these two booster packs because uh, you will be notified if you're subbed and if you ring that bell. Anyway, this is the mail day for now. It's almost 45 minutes. I think it's one of the longest mail days ever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ezra, for these incredible cards. Thank you, Petra, for the Homelands cards. It's fantastic. Almost a complete set, so thank you for that. And also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.